do it. Is it? Oh, it's already happening. Oh, we're, we're already recording? We always oh, do this. this. It's always like this. We, we don't like an intro. A so sloppy we just, it's, open. It's, oh, wow. Yeah, we're, just, we're, just, we're, just, we're just like a surprise. Like, what? You recorded all that? Oh, no. It's like, in, it's like Eastwood directing. That's By the way, <laughs> is this a podcast? What is this? Yeah, I mean it. It's you like have a to tell me what I think this is rock bottom. No, rock I bottom, just mean because yeah. you know I just show up to places and I and I'm told. I don't know how we tricked you into so. being here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I mean, honestly, it was. It was. Uh, it was a gift through my friend Richard. Richard, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, who knew? Well, and then this is the Cheat Day Show. And Mayron, please introduce our, uh, Pussy to our cats, guests. This is the Cheat Day Show. And uh, today's show is, I mean, it's just pure confection. I can't even believe that we have the panel that we do. It's obviously Ryan, who is my co-host. He is what it is. And I own gonna, the equipment. We're going to get into this. <laughs> we, we're going to get into this. But tonight, we have Mateo Lane, who is our colleague and uh, fellow comedian. Very Second appearance. Man. Second appearance Second on this appearance. show. We're video now. so. And uh, <laughs> my God, the excitement. Uh, we have Isaac Mizrahi. My God. Fashion designer, entrepreneur, television personality, entertainer, writer. Stop. Uh, everything <laughs> is everything. This is... Oh, uh, I... It's the most like exciting thing in the entire world to have you here, like low key. I'm tr- I'm containing. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's nice. I I, I, I have nothing to say to that. I would move on to the next. Topic. The next thing. Yes. Okay. We can. The, Let's talk about Matteo, shall we? You want to talk about Matteo? Yes, okay. I do. Well, of course. What's not to? I mean, he's. I want to know something. Where are you from? Chicago. Come on. <laughs> I love Chicago. Like, it's one of the places I really like. Yeah. You know, like, if you had said somewhere in, I don't know where, like, Pennsylvania, I would have said, like, <laughs> what town in Scranton. Pennsylvania. Scranton. <laughs> exactly. But Chicago is, like, the greatest place in the world. It yeah. It really, really is. It does not get enough credit in this town. Yeah, I, fe- I feel world. like it. it's, like, it's... Not overlooked, but people always go to Chicago and say the same thing. They're like, oh, I could live here. Oh, I really like it here. Oh, there's, like, space and homes here. Totally. You know? Yeah. Unless you're from New York and then you go there and you're like, I could spend three or four days. And then it's not it's not horrible and nasty enough yeah, to that's live true. there. You have to be more horrible and nasty. It is really... You moved to New York from Chicago when? I was 26. So, this. oh, in, like, a two weeks, it'll be so my 10-year like, anniversary. September what? 1st, 2012. And when you moved, did you find it easy? Was it an easy transition? Yeah, I think as a Chicagoan, are you a New Yorker? I am a New Yorker. Utter. Yes. Yeah, I think I think for Chicagoans of all the cities in America, it's like the easiest transition to New York because you're like, okay, I get big cities and skyscrapers and transportation and crazy mm. people on the street. Like, you know, you just grow up with that. So to New York, it was like, well, yeah, you know, whatever. It was an, you use the word transition. Is that something? Mm. Did I mean? Tra- mm. I said what I said. Did you said. get the surgery? <laughs> Did you get the surgery or the New York just, surgery? <laughs> no, but but New York, uh, the thing I like more about New York is that one, mm. when you're on the tra- like the trains are eat, they're more mixed. Like you can in Chicago, it's all from one part and then it goes downtown. Right. So when you transfer, it's so annoying. But in New York, it's like oh, I'll jump here and go get this train. I'll take the G all the way down to you know the L and the L into the city and take the J. P- people often say that it's our trains that are fantastic. <laughs> But it's something we really pride stay ourselves for, on. Stay for the trains. Oh, the trains in New York are, are fantastic. Subways I mean. are the greatest, greatest things in the. Are you kidding? In New York, and I haven't been on the subway in about twenty-five years. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. I remember they're the best. It's only, it's only the rich people that are like, I love the subway. <laughs> I remember when they were back. amazing. No, they were, oh, wait, they always were like horrible and and squalid. Mm. When I was a kid, they were literally you walked over bodies. Usually, yeah, that's to now. Get to your yeah, and there was like blood splats and. Rats. And <laughs> it was Nothing horrible. changed. You know, oh, when, I, when I, I wrote a memoir, and when I, I was describing it in one of the passages when I was a kid, and I said it was squalid, and the editor circled the word squalid and said, you really want to use this? I was like, no, if there was something that meant even more horrible than squalid, I would use that <laughs> word, you know? There's, one she New was York. younger. She was like your age. And you just don't understand. I mean, there was like a garbage fire on every corner of every block in New York City in the 1980s and 70s. What really. part of New York are you from? Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so I took the subway a lot because I went to high school in, on 46th Street at Performing Arts High School. 
Yeah. Oh, fame. I was going to say that's a I'm fame school, fame. isn't it? Did you ever see the movie of Fame? Of course. Oh, my God. And you don't recognize me from my three-second clip? Oh, my God. No, is it's this like real? A, it's totally real. Darling. I have a We're going to edit that in. We're going to edit that no, you in. This is yeah, that's, Of that course is, that is we are. You have to rent it. If No, you don't rent, rent it? movies anymore. You, you <laughs> download. I'll go to the red to, box. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> go to, go to Blockbuster. Sure, yeah. Exactly. Go down to Rewind Blockbuster. Rewind or you get charged. <laughs> we used to have family video in Chicago, in the Chicago land area. It was like a Midwest. It was competing with Blockbuster, and it was family video. And I always used to envy the kids who went to Blockbuster because it was like, looked corporate and shiny and blue and yellow and family video was family. You know what else is better about New York than Chicago? Mm. Mm. Getting laid. I mean that. I'm yeah. listening. Here's the thing. If you go to a bar in Chicago, you are likely to meet someone very attractive, uh-huh. right? But then you get home and like nothing happens. Unless you do. Unless you it's make not it eminently sexual. It's not. It's like they go to just be there and be gay and cute, right? Whereas here they are going to get laid. You know what I mean? DTF. And so you, at least when I was, you know, your age, out at night, out. Because well, everyone's more business oriented here. So yeah, it's like, come on, let's get it going. You know, right. Yeah, I have to hop on the subway and get to work. So right. like, get and by this, the subway, I mean going. this guy. Uh, <laughs> I think Chicago is it's, it's more like it's oddly a small town in a large town, or at least it feels that way coming now from New York to Chicago. It feels very like quaint. Yes, yeah, I same. I'm from Boston, and when I go back home, I'm like well, this village, you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this darling village. Chicago also has a lot of beautiful Mies van der Rohe buildings, right? Yeah, I'm all ears. Mies and van der Rohe. and, and uh, I'm glad Franklin. you said it because I was going to bring. Oh, it and yes, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, and. Who are we thinking of? I can't of? think of his name. Frank Lloyd Wright. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. Lloyd, it was, it's a lot of great architecture in Chicago. Really, you pass by these buildings that you cannot Why'd you believe. go to fame? What were you going to school for? Um, theater, you know, drama. I was in the drama department. Okay. Drama. Yeah. Like singing also or just? Yeah, not really. It really wasn't musical theater, but we did musical. I mean, we were at a chorus line every day at standing room, every single night, all of us. It was crazy. Yes. And Chicago and all those shows. I have to throw in a quick qualification here. So... Normally when we do this, Ryan doesn't let me research anyone that we're interviewing. He, right. I'm supposed to come in here just bunny, innocent, right, wide-eyed, not knowing a thing. In this event, I told him not to research you at all. Oh, <laughs> oh that's hilarious. Well, so I mean, I, is... I, I am familiar a little bit with who you are, but I don't know your background. I didn't do any. Mm-hmm. Well, wait a minute. I had a show last night at this club called 54 Below. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. it's on, uh, 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 I just saw Lorna Love there 54, a month ago. And it's, no way. Yeah. I did. I went with Liza Minnelli to oh see God. Lorna Luft at the Rainbow Room. You did? Like, yes, I did. And when? Can I just tell you something? In like 1995 or something like I that? I do the best Liza Minnelli impression. So after I have, the, story, I I have the photo, so, Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, so here it was the thing like nobody watched Lorna. Right. They, they watched Liza watching Lorna. And Liza mm. completely worked it. She was like, oh, oh. <laughs> No, the entire show. Mama. You know, like yeah. the entire, like yeah. every word out of her mouth was just so. Sorry, where were we? But where, where were we? Because we You did a show on as 54 Below. below. So oh, that's right. Mateo as Liza. Woman. Just Oh, come just, on, with the mustache. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, now, <laughs> to be fair, I have a better He's one. Done it. Yeah, I this, remember that. This was done by Bob the Drag Queen in the middle of the pandemic when yeah, I was on that good. weird TV show where they asked comics to, like, quickly, like, do two-minute, like, at-home stuff. So I was like, I guess I'll do Liza. So Bob and Monet put me in the shittiest drag possible, and then I just sat there, and they interviewed me about the pandemic. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's something absurd. Well, wait a minute, because here's what I really want. Now, fuck the rest of this shit. What is Bob the drag queen really like? Mm. Oh, Bob's... I'm kidding. I'm oh, just okay. Blah. He's insufferable. He's a terrible <laughs> human being. And I've never liked him or enjoyed you his company. You judged Drag Race once, didn't you, if I remember? A few, the, yeah, maybe yeah, a few more times. than I, A couple times. No, excuse me. RuPaul mm. and I go back, darling. Of course you do. I got RuPaul to go to Paris once when I was... I made this handbag for the Louis Vuitton, like... Centenary. I don't know what the mm. hell it was, mm. and sh- I I hired her them mm. it, the him mm. to do a show at the Palais something whatever it was. Mm. It was Vivian Westwood, me, uh, as a dean, a few people who were commissioned by Louis Vuitton, and so we had to do like a show. So I got RuPaul to come to do the yes, show, you did. and. At the rehearsal, a light fell on her head. <gasps> oh my God. And she had to be like rushed to the, And I was like, oh, you know, it was really something. And then, <laughs> and, but, and guess what? She showed up and she did the show that night. 
Okay. She wow. Came out of the hospital and whisked her ass up to the fucking palais. Just whatever. like Liza. Tell me her head exactly. was bandaged. Tell no, it wasn't. <laughs> honey, whatever, whatever bandage was hidden by the massive wig. Of course. Right, of exactly. course. But I promise that's true. Ask RuPaul. I also got her once to do talking heads in front of this. I did this show for Condé Nast. It was like a... It was, it was a tribute to Leo Lerman. Do you know who that is? If you don't, you have to just Google Leo Lerman because he was mm. the most fabulous sort of art director guy in the world who had this massive life, and he wrote a great memoir. Anyway, the point is that um, he, we did a thing, and he, RuPaul stood outside and did, like, you know, talking heads. And I loved it because it wasn't like, oh, how do you feel about the Mideast crisis? It was all like, you know, oh, what's your favorite eyeshadow or something, you know? It was all ridiculous. Which Everybody is much more it. important to me. Much, much more important. <laughs> and you know, wait a minute. Oh, this, I have, I have to say this, mm. okay? Because if we all watched, did you, of course you watched um, All Stars, All Winners. Yeah, of yeah, course. yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Because on several occasions, mm. it was inferred that Gianni Versace pre- premiered Working Girl. You know, work, you know that song, yeah. right? Uh-huh. You better work. Yes, right? yes. Darlings, moi. It was in my show before it was in anybody's show. This is huge. And that important. might have slipped RuPaul's mind, okay? <laughs> but it has never slipped. And I was watching Naomi and Ru talk about this, and I was like, girls, <laughs> what the fuck? Call me up. <laughs> Call me up and get Linda Evangelista on the phone to, to, whatever, <laughs> to, 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 you know, to confirm, verify, to verify, exactly. to cosign. But no, really, I just wanted to put it out there. Okay. I just wanted to put it out there. Yes. First. No, we, that's this, these are, this is important. This is important cultural. Right. We're not here to revise mind. history. We are here to correct it. We are here to amend it. God we damn it. We are. We are. Yes. We are. Let the children learn. The fake news, honey. It will not fly Absolutely. on this podcast. Stop the steal. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean that in terms of crediting. Yes. All right. So. Th- there are a million questions that stem off this, but I do want to get back to you being at 54 Below, because that's where you were. You were oh, saying well, you were no, performing. no, because you, you were like, show. you didn't do any research, because you don't know mm, who the hell mm, I am. Mm. Is, no, but I know I, I live right you. there. It's 54th Street, and no, no, no. it's the old <laughs> Studio 54, I mean, and mean, there's a bar next to it called Three Monkeys. There was this, <laughs> there was this person who rode me down from the, ele- you know, from the dressing room, and right before the show, and she's like, oh, well, yeah, I mean... I som- somehow it, it came up that she had no idea who I was. And I was like, oh, okay, great, you know? Mm. And then after the show, she wrote me up and she's like, your show is so great. And I was like, well, you see, she didn't have any idea who I was. And she loved the show. So there you go. Of I just course. It was an amazing thing to hear. I keep hearing good things about you on stage. Well, you might get off your lazy ass and come ah, see me one I night. I would do it queen. in a heart. Are you kidding me? I'm coming. I'm co- When's the next one? I'm just not telling. It's tonight. I, tomorrow. No. Yes. I'll come tonight. All right. Well, okay. Cancel shouldn't come. Go on. That's who I am. Go on. I'll buy a ticket. I don't want her to come because she's just too funny and hilarious and great. So and I meanwhile, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't stage you, Hooker, but Mateo, uh, I could possibly. That's amazing. No, that's. Uh, I just have to say that because I'm sort of not kidding. But go on. You love him. I know for a no, fact that you if, love Mateo. What if, like, what if, what if some really hilarious person who you admired? Who is that? Um, there's a lot. I mean, well, Joan Rivers was my number one. I never got to meet her. I was an uh, open <laughs> micer when she died. So I never got a chance yeah. to like, well, what I was if trying she to came scale. to your show? Wouldn't you be nervous? I would leave. You would leave. Of course, you just wouldn't Or I would just on. hand the mic to her and be like, exactly. go on. Well, that's what I would do. If yeah. But, but here's the thing. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so don't come. Because <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to function if I know you. That's, I'm not kidding. I'll bring Lorna Love. Right. I, that, I don't I know. I, th- I think you're selling yourself short. I have like... Any time no, you've ever I'm, been on I'm TV. Great. I'm yeah. great. I yeah. just don't want this person this in the audience because I just he don't. Is, he is effervescent. He really is. He <laughs> no, is, it would again he be is the a Lorna font of gay joy. He would be the Liza in the audience that <laughs> no one would be watching, and I would have to pull the spotlight and that away. Is, from and while you're performing, I'd be like, world. Mama. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the format of the show? Yeah. What do you um, do? Well, I have a trio, and I sing a lot. <gasps> I just tell stories, and I am effervescent and cute, and I wear a suit usually, and I do what kind of a suit? little bit of makeup. Um, you know, any number of bespoke things that I have lying around. Oh, from- my God. I can't imagine <laughs> this one with the wardrobe and the and archives. Just- and. Dead. How much I'm money dead. are you worth? It's so like money it's just falls out of your head. No, by the way, it's just falls not, out of his Not mouth. enough. Not yeah. enough. <laughs> not enough. Falls out of his Not commensurate to your I'm not kidding. Action. I have some stuff, but you go. Uh, you talk to like every other person who's dating some hedge funder, and they uh-huh. just got back from, 
you know, Greece from on a private plane mm -hmm. with eight people Ugh. in quilts on beds. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Bed. Eight people oh. on private quilts. The, the photo on the yacht, no, the guy's no, never in it. And they had a yacht and the had guy's a never in the yacht. Resort. He's never Look in the photo. Look at the reflection the of the girls sunlight. In the and then, and I'm in New York, like, training a puppy. You know, <laughs> which is hell. Shit. Anyway. I mean, your Rolodex is, I mean, it's one of the strongest in, in human history. I mean, for, well, for the, the let 80s, me say this. 90s. Wait, can I just say this? Please. Because, you know, like, not really. Because here's the thing. I have a few friends, you know, like Liza. She's, she's a friend. And, you know, Sandra Bernhard. We are close friends, right? But that's it. Mm. And, 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 you know, some incredible ballet dancers. I, I, I also like the ballet a lot, yeah. right? But not that many movies. Like, really, movie stars, I don't know. They're, like, scared. Because you... They, they email you and then you email them back and then they don't even, you know, you don't hear for They kind of go, that's, yeah. That's actors for you. Actors, <laughs> right? I'm interested for three seconds and goodbye. And then goodbye. <laughs> no, you yeah. know, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like Nicole Kidd, you know, whoever it is. It's like they sure. like you and then they kind of just ghost you a little Yeah, bit. I prefer comedians or, you know, like live performers. Well, we sense. see each other a ton. Yeah, and but we see there's each also other like a ton a, for years. It's like a sense, there's no, you know, there's no needing each other for something. It's just, mm. it's, it's just celebrating each other. At least you're doing comedy. Everyone's going up and doing their own thing. Yeah. There does seem to be, sometimes with actors, it's very like, you. it's like... Like you're up for the same part? Or I don't or trust. I no, don't know. No, no. It's just that, I, I, you know, my thing is like, they, they think that everybody wants something from them, which is not untrue, you know? So it's like, if somebody emails you and goes, oh, I loved your thing, blah, 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 thanks so much, da, 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 right? And then you go, thank you, it was great to see you, and I love you, and the dress was great, or whatever, the party was fun ghost, right? Mm. Um, hmm. That's because they know the next email is going to be like, hey, why don't you do this for me that you yeah. can do for me? You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. But you're not. You're a <laughs> contemporary. You're not like a uh, person on the street. You're not. I'm not. But you know exactly. But yeah. it's just what they think, I think. You know? yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I'm talking for now all the movie stars that I've ever dealt with. Okay? Literally every Who are now one. killing cockroaches in their studio apartments <laughs> in the West Hollywood. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. And not training puppies. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, puppies is, it beats cockroaches. You, you had like a, a fashion house, like a proper fashion empire for yeah. a solid decade. And by the way, not only did I have an amazing house, but I had a house, a Vogue house. I still do. It's one of the great Vogue houses. Did you hear the remix? Did you hear Queen B and Madonna? Oh, I haven't heard it yet. What? Is Madonna, this Madonna and Beyonce. Are yeah. you? Wait, Did what? Do you have this, monkey pox? This, Are you gay? No. He, would, he literally wouldn't kiss my face because he thinks I have monkey pox. Oh, no. <laughs> I shook your hand. I'm pr I assure you. It's, it All hasn't right. shook anything else in a minute. Because I... I'm not gay, for one thing, so I can't either. <laughs> either. Me either. No one else here. <laughs> but, um, Actually, yeah, poor, sorry. Poor but, Ryan. Um, but <laughs> but um, what were we talking about? I keep, I'm too Madonna much. Madonna and Beyonce. Oh, right. Because in this remix, they go through all the really famous houses, like the house of La Beja, the house of Balenciaga. Okay. The house of Mizrahi. They <laughs> better. <laughs> no, that's yes! what she does. And it's like being seen by God or something. Because it's Madonna and her. And Beyonce, So yeah. it's like Vogue and you won't. Surely you crossed streams with Madonna at some oh, point. I was just going to ask the same I mean, question. Like, are you Absolutely. kidding? And by the way, she will email you back. Okay. Madonna will email you back. She doesn't give a shit. That one is Bob very, just, very She's good a human. Yeah. yeah, Bob. She's really wildly human. Yes, yeah. she is. Go on. Oh, Bob, Bob the Drag Queen just did a pride show with her like a I month ago. And she, he's like, I've never dealt with someone more professional in my entire life. She would call every day. We'd plan the show and the rehearsals. She wanted to see outfits like beforehand. Like, you know, it was great. No, but I mean, I'm not even talking about like professional. I'm talking about like if you go, hey, Madge, what's going on? She'll go, oh, yeah, I love you. I'm busy. You know, oh, yeah. as opposed to work. no word from Madonna. You know what I mean? Seriously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool. But, but you're also be, friends with Sandra Bernhardt. Well, that that's could be it. That's touchy, actually, right? I just, what it I is. just met her. Sandra? Sandra? We did everything. that standout show on Netflix together. So it was all these queer comics together in one room. And so it's a lot. You know a what I mean? Lot. But I was like, I was standing right next to her. And I was like, well, I should, we're on the same show. I should probably say hi. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, hi, Sandra. I'm Mateo. Nice to meet you. And she was like, hello. Like, you know, but there's so much going on. Oh, yeah. There was no time for either one of us to talk to each other. But I'm a huge fan of hers. I mean, 
what's not to be a fan of. No, She's a major there's, lady. There's, there's, there's just so much time for hair and makeup. You know. <laughs> right, right. Hundred <laughs> percent. I think that's another thing, though, is that with entertainment and all of this stuff, like there is an inherent transience. There is like an inherent like you're shuffled in, you're dressed up, you do your part, you roll out, right? So that friendships aren't necessarily assured. So the friendships that do happen mean something. Am I crazy about that? No, yeah. No, I mean, you're you right. Just have less time for everything. I think, especially at Sandra Bernhard's status and level, it's like, you know what I mean? Like she doesn't have time to make small conversations with. Pretty much anyone. Except she's like some kind of shaman. You know that about her, right? Yeah, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's deeply, deeply gifted. Like yeah. She's a real artist, you know? And so, you know, she connects with people. She gets stuff. I like that she I mean? brought out a carpet or a rug for her to perform Oh, yeah. On. That yeah. I really yeah, loved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did she burn sage? I remember when she used to she burn sage. She used to burn sage. sage on stage. That was really good. <laughs> the best thing she used to do was just read from magazines. Did you ever see any of that? <laughs> she would read from, she would take the first class menu from, from you know, from Air France, and she would re just read it on stage like, cold shrimp salad. Ooh, I burn. Hate <laughs> so cold. It was so incredible. It was really great. It was yes. great. Yes. Do you know, do, did you ever get into Sandra Bernhardt as a comedian? I know who she is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know you know who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, a little bit, but not much. Poor I Ryan is so straight. I'm kidding. I, I mean, loved it. You know, I, oh, I did not. I did not. I don't use So Google. Ryan does Google something interesting in this job in that he does warm up for like late night. So would that the audience. Uh, Seth Myers, I do warm up for uh, uh, late night with Seth Myers. And you Myers. pinch it for, but he did Megyn Kelly for a while. That was a trip. She's That's a nice crazy. lady. She's a nice lady. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, then. She's a nice lady. You know, Republicans are people too. You know. Are we saying that? Yes, Can we... we are, darling. <laughs> and here's some messaging. They have to continue to buy my clothes because they look really good in them. They and better. All that money goes straight to Planned Parenthood. Okay. Boom. Yay. Sorry. You know, you, I can say that. You can say not? whatever you want. I said no. I was like, I don't know. You're not a Republican. I'm like, I don't know why you're pointing Kelly. at me. I'm like, because I, you are the, you. Yeah, me. Point out, he is, but he has that face. He has that white devil no, face. I, I work for. A, <laughs> she was at NBC. I work at NBC, so it's just one of those things. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> she, however, I will say in person, one of the youngest reading. Do you know what I mean? Like, really, like, she looked face-tuned in person. Mm. It, was, it was a shock to see her in person. Who was the queen recently? You might know this. It was hilarious. Maybe it was even you with an exchange with, like, Monet exchange with somebody where they said, oh, you know, how do you deal with this thing about, like, selling out? Da, 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 da. And he, she was like, oh, honey, I just sell out. Who was that? <laughs> I don't know. Katya talks about selling Someone really out funny. Really happily. Trixie? Oh, okay. Katya? Katya talked about it Maybe with, with Z-Way. Someone, somebody. Oh, Z I love that show. That's Which a great one? show. Z-Way. Z-Way. Are you, have you gotten into Z-Way? She's a little uh, wonderful upstart, like very sharp, very quick-witted. And she does interviews where uh, the person being interviewed is sort of like put in uncomfortable situations where they have to speak about what they actually think politically. Oh, like that's she, great. And it comes out of left field. Like she really is like shadow I love how you think them. of like um, their upstart young queens. Yeah. Whereas it used to be if you put on a wig, you were celebrated that as a was drag it. queen. I mean, that was it. You and were you the got... one drag queen in the room. Rough looking. Remember I rem when drag queens used to just look rough? I remember just... in Chicago, the, the, one of the only drag queens that I can remember, like when I was 18 and sneaking into clubs and stuff, is like there was a drag queen named Miss Foozy. I don't know if she's still doing it, but her <laughs> catchphrase was pineapples. And so <laughs> you'd be... At a bar, and there's like, you know, go go boys and all this stuff, and then suddenly you just hear pineapples, and you're like, oh, Miss Foozy's here. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if she's still running around doing it. Well, a few things. Everybody knows Lipsinka, right? Of course. Yeah. Lipsinka is the greatest. I mean, I don't know if you, did you ever see any so, of those incredible A very centered performer. Yeah. It's a real deep dive into drag queens. No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You better like, learn. What? Hey, what? hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you over there. Trumper over there. <laughs> oh, what are you doing to me? The poor thing. Oh, the my poor God. thing. He doesn't vote. But no. Lipsinka. <laughs> God, no. Lipsinka used to do this, in, or these. She did for mm. years. I don't, you know, she used to do these incredible, like, lip sync shows that were just these clips that went on for hours, and she would memorize these crazy, crazy lip syncs and never miss a beat. Oh, and yeah. Just, oh, you remember these shows. Yeah, of course. I never saw this. They, no, there would be yeah. these, like, montages of, they like, spoken insane. word and then song and then, but with hairpin turns. Hairpin turns and a scream suddenly mm. and, you know, whatever. Um, you know that Lipsinka, before 
she did that. She was a she did a show as a drag queen and she played the piano. She's an incredible. Do you know? This did not her? know she was a penis. She was not only a penis, but she <laughs> used to. She, she and she may still. I swear to God, through all those years of her being the most famous drag queen in the world, she was playing rehearsal piano for ABT. Oh wow! Oh, every single like day, I, I she went like to class and she played class piano every single like redu- giant reductions of Swan Lake. I just watched an interview with Lady Bunny, who was my favorite drag queen She's of all amazing. time, and she was talking about how the difference of drag back then and now is like you needed to actually have an act. You had to have mm. an act in order to be yes. seen or be booked or be you know it's and uh, how drags changed. Obviously drags change a lot of ways for the better. I mean, and it's done a lot of wonderful things, but one of the things that she or Coco Peru would talk about is like, you had to make a name for yourself. You had to have something mysterious about you and you had to have an act when they came to see you. Totally. You can't just be Bob the drag queen and show up. And Bob's never done anything talented in his entire ah, life. Yeah. I just thought I would Poor set Bob. you up for that, darling. Poor Bob. Bob actually, but, but Bob really does harpen back to those days because we yes, would go see Bob at Barracuda, you know, before he was on Drag Race and stuff. And Bob had the best show, and Monet as well. I mean, Monet and Bob, they worked their asses well, off. And Monet had shows can sing. And, oh my dance. God, Monet can sing. Yeah. And by the way, he has um, Bob has a show on one of the streaming services that where he's just doing jokes for, and it's hilarious. And there's a few clips of him backstage putting his eyelashes on talking about like Streisand and whatever and it's I was with him that was thing. I was in that video oh, you, you're kidding yeah. I don't remember oh yeah Sorry, it was I in the beginning he was putting makeup on <laughs> and he was going he was like he said something bad about Streisand or right. something not exactly thinking. bad it was just like he said I'm just gonna say it you know and he said it and it's something so wonderful these are really hot and, and then he called his if mom you lo- if you want to lose him lose him I mean you sound great here. do you Wait, know what I mean I would let you know let me call Bob real quick because I forget what he said to his mom oh my god See if he picks up. He might be filming. Well, of course, now they all film, you know. Right, in the HBO know. show, the uh, We're Here. Oh, that's right. Good morning. Hi, you're on a podcast. Real quick, <laughs> what did you say in the beginning of your special when you called your mom? <laughs> what did your mom say to you? She said, um, don't be doing a lot of cussing. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm motherfucking cussing. And then she said, don't be. She said, then she goes like... Y'all remember that fucking time we got that motherfucker played this motherfucker? She was so goddamn crazy. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, I love you. By the way, rough uh, night, Bob. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Do you sound like that every morning? Jesus. Bob. Like what? Like yeah. Bob. My, my voice. Yes. Meow. Yeah. Uh, What's wrong with my voice? Nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing. It'll yeah, hurt him. <laughs> Bob, I love you very much. All right, bye. 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 That's very sweet. There's first Bob. call in. But that is a... The, so uh, first, first isn't call it a in weird we had thing? Bob the Drag Queen. And, the, and poor Ryan's, right? So homos, we love pop culture, right? In general, like, we live through pop culture a lot. Wait a minute. A lot, some right? homos love some pop culture. Oh, good okay. for I just absolutely. Want to. We shouldn't cast too wide a net. You know I what I mean? Resist that. You can Don't. suck a dick and not own a television. That's right. But... Uh, that being said, at least these three, I think, we all love pop culture from a very particular angle. And then to work in entertainment and meet all of these people, right? For you, has it ever been like, uh, kind of, what was the gag, right? When was it gaggy? When you met someone where you were like, ah, do you know what I mean? Mariah. You, you met Ms. Mariah. I'm the biggest Mariah Carey fan in the world. <laughs> And so I finally got to meet her in an elevator for this MTV show called, like, Fans Meet Their Whatever. And so it was a bunch of real fans, but, but the producers knew me from Girl Code and Guy Code, that MTV show. Of course. So they knew I loved Mariah. So they, like, got me in there. And um, it was it, it's, it, I, it was weird to meet her because when I was on her good side, so she couldn't quite turn and look at me when she spoke. But when you're in an elevator... <laughs> <laughs> But when you're in an elevator with somebody, you know, the, your natural disposition is to not look at people in the face. That's just how you are in elevators. Sure. Everyone sort of looks down or looks at it's the It's a phone. private space. So we're all just sort of staring at her, and it's such a small space. But um, I remember she was very nice. We all sang Always Be My Baby together. And then it, they were like, do not touch you Mariah. You sang with Mariah. This is yeah. huge. Wow. Yeah. And she did a whistle note, and it sounded yeah. great. <laughs> and um, then when we left, they were like, do not touch Mariah. But, of course, the white girl was like, Mariah, can I have a hug? <laughs> 
so oh Mariah did. And then I, I was like, well, fuck it. This is my chance. Can I have a hug, Mariah? She goes, sure. She hugged me like the help. And uh, <laughs> But it was great. It was 15 uh, minutes in an elevator with Mariah Carey. And uh, yeah. That is deep and meaningful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was, you know. Isaac, who are you starstruck for? Yeah. Um, have I mean, you met Streisand? Yeah, are you kidding? I know her. I mean, I'm close. Okay, okay her. my no, number this one. Is, uh, now I'm hemorrhaging. <laughs> and I did gags because you know, growing up, I list. That's all I did was I did impersonations. I mean, I grew yeah. up as a female. I did female impersonations for anyone who would listen. That's how. It, this was not a source of pride for the Mizrahi <laughs> family. Sure, sure, sure. In the 1970s. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, so that happened, and and um, and once uh, one of the suits that I made for her was misnamed in one of the publicity photographs and they said it was Donna Karen and it was really my suit and she wrote a note going darling we know better we know better yes and, uh, and I was like right that's true we do know better and that, that was gag for me it was like what and then we had dinner a few times and we sort of got to, you know right and that was before email so she didn't have the opportunity to ghost me in right, <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah but then there was this I, uh, once I was doing an interview a long, long, long time ago when the when the Clintons were president. Okay, and they said, "Oh, what do you think of the the?" Because um, this was kind of hilarious. What do you think of the renovations and the new decor? And the way I said, "Oh, you know what? They're never going to see this. It's some little magazine called Time Magazine, basically." <laughs> but anyway, so so I go. She go. They go. I go. They go what do you think of? The, I said, you know, it looks like a beefsteak Charlie's to me. You I know, love I you. she'll never see I it. Love you. I'll never meet her. I'm a little nothing in the world. So then, of course, like cut to several months later, and I meet her, and literally, I was shaking her hand in the garden at MoMA, and the first word she was like, "Beefsteak Charlie's really thank you so much." <laughs> Hillary, Hillary mind like a steel trap. That okay. is unreal. Also, a great writer of notes. Presidential. I have so many notes from these people. I, I have to find these notes and publish these notes because they are just un- notes. Do you ever handwrite a note? No, and now when I write, it feels like foreign. I'm like, oh god, how do I write again? I'm very good at cursive, really? but normal writing, I it's like. Well, da, he's da, also. Da. You, do you know that he's an incredible artist, like a, a drawing and art? Right. Actually, used so. to be a fashion illustrator for television ads and storyboarding. Show him for, your tattoo for years. Oh, this is my tattoo of Maria Callas. <gasps> Come on, is wow. he beautiful? Gay anyone? Right. Really? <laughs> Maria Callas. I'm obsessed. She's my favorite. But this is a drawing I did ten years ago when I moved did. to New York, Amazing. and then it took me ten years to find an artist who was able to to do it. It was you a know, scary. Russian guy. She ingested a tapeworm. You knew that, right? That's a. That's it's not. Real. Is that not true? It's not. No, it's not it real. Well, it's then what am real. I doing it? Because for. It actually, <laughs> she lost the weight. It took her a year and a half to lose the weight. I mean, she she actually. I would probably classify it as like a type of eating disorder because when you looked at her at her oh, French dear. concert in like 1958, she was so thin and she was trying very hard to look like um, Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. But then, was. but right when she met Onassis, then she finally gave up and she started eating again. But a lot of the eating regimens that she put herself on, she also believed was because I can't have salt because it will affect my voice. I can't do this. Right. It will affect my voice. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but it took her a year and a half to lose all that weight. It, w- it wasn't a tapeworm. But I thought it was. I convinced my husband Arnold that it was a tapeworm. No. I was like, oh no, darling, it was a tapeworm and they filmed it. <laughs> I, I it they filmed it. They filmed it and everything. Yeah, somewhere there's evidence. <laughs> somewhere. Only because our new puppy has like hookworms. So sure. of course the subject of worms came up and I thought Maria Callis. <laughs> Maria <says> Callis. <laughs> We've yeah. all done extreme <laughs> things. <laughs> Which is a perfect segue. I think that like Right, we were we we entertained the idea that Maria Callas actually gave herself a parasite to lose weight, which other people have, right? But in general, the, like we all do something to regiment the way that we eat, right? We yeah. do something. It did is, and th- it, this is the uncomfortable part of the conversation. But it is cheat day. That's the whole point, yes. right? I want to know how you eat in general, right? Because I know, like at my highest I was 280, 280, but like then at one point with insulin it was like three thirty. Wow. I've had I've had Jeez. huge fluctuations in weight, and generally have to be somewhat careful, <laughs> like as I as I travel through the world. Otherwise I could balloon in an instant, right? As in like I am. I have the instinct. I have violet, the you're turning violet, violet. Yes, very bad. <laughs> even very. even no, what's that great thing? Um, oh, of um, Elaine May. You know that hilarious thing where the, the Mike Nichols Elaine May thing where 
They're talking in, with English accents. And he's, uh, oh, how, oh, she's so fat. Oh, yeah, she's so fat. <laughs> and how is she? Oh, she lost a little weight. So he's like, well, what does she look like then? And Elaine May goes, even thin, she's fat. Yes. <laughs> it's maybe the best thing. It's the, the truest, world, realest, right? deepest. <laughs> even thin, she's fat. Even darling. thin, she's yeah. fat. I'm very You're looking that. at him. Yeah, I'm very, very that. Bad. She's so fat. So oh, what is so that? I mean, like, I, I see pictures of you. You've been so adorable, so handsome. I feel, do you know, and isn't that the weirdest thing? Because I know you're not going to think that way of yourself, right? Well, I don't think of myself that do way. Do you know what I mean? And I have since the day I laid eyes on him. Do you know what I mean? Maybe in saw? the bathroom in 20 minutes. Yes! Girl. Yes! I really like, taking that cheat day literally, huh? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Good boy. Do you see that? He's ready. Wow. <laughs> What's the heaviest you've ever been, Isaac? <gasps> you want to know, yeah. really? Wow. 275. 275, Mateo? Uh, right now. Really? Yeah, but it's you all, that's the one. Look at you. It's too he's gross. wearing a half shirt. For those oh, of you who are only listening, I I'm just want to I'm not saying as I feel shirt. overweight. I'm just, but this, I, this right. I have a very hard time keeping on weight. So <sighs> I, when I moved to I New know, York, I was I 130 know. pounds. <laughs> 320. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah high school. He's and he. You I've think, never gotten into comedy because I felt good about myself. <laughs> well, no, who does? I mean, who ever does? But what did, did you into just a tapeworm? Is that what no, that no, no? I, I, I <laughs> like became an opera singer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I failed a lot, and then I, I eventually went to a nutritionist who kind of taught me how to eat, but uh, also allowed me to have cheat meals or cheat days, which is is kind of the key to. I have to say, though, like, I am so really good. Oh, this is like a real thing for me, cheat days. I, I, I really think I'm excellent most days. And then, usually Saturday is my cheat, cheat day. And, and then by Sunday, I literally have gained, like, every... Oh, oh yeah. B big again. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I call. I, I like say uh, I'm the fat Hulk. Like, there's, there's <laughs> right. a fat guy right behind me that's like, <laughs> any minute now. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't like me very much uh -huh. if I ate chili fries. <laughs> No, that's very. I, it's I, like, do you ever get that way? Because I, what Isaac just said about after a cheat day, you just feel enormous. Like I'll have a piece of chocolate and look at my face in the mirror and be like, "You giant girl, you huge <laughs> piece of shit." <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Like, just I'll be like, I can see where well, the chocolate can't landed. This in is my not jaws. resonating with ever. Mateo no, ever. He can't he's relate. Cursing us out for like he wants to gain weight. Could you ever imagine such a? Thing? I can't. <laughs> well, I'm just, I mean, I also took, I spent five years, I hired a nutritionist, I hired a trainer, I watch my diet, I eat. To gain weight. To gain muscle. Well, and I mean, I, there's a certain so, certain aesthetic that I enjoy. And, well, you know. That, I mean, that's extreme. I mean, you're training like an Olympic athlete and you're a median. So, like, what do you well, think that is? Like, to have a nutritionist. I think I'm just trainer, extreme. I think when I sure. sang opera, I went to the extreme. When I was drawing, I went to the extreme. Comedy, the extreme. I mean, I'm sort of that way. If I like something and I want to do it at its at its best that I can, but I mean, you know, it's like because a lot of people are like, oh, well, you look this way or whatever. And I'm like, yes, but I'm like, if I showed you what I looked like before, it's it it requires just as much work in order for me to go to the gym and on the road and bring my meals. Absolutely, and, you know. It's a lot of work. I think of you as someone who is tremendously disciplined. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And, and no, and, and I don't think that like, oh, he just, you know, oh, he, I get that you have to work to put on weight, but like that's. Here, I'll show you what I looked like when I was twenty-three. Yes. yes. Let's see. This is me living in I Italy. I love it. Receipts. 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 I hope you better have boobs. Boobs. <laughs> no, he's gonna I mean, be super you thin. Know, I was very thin. Oh, Mateo. Yeah. I didn't say it was bad. I'm that just is, saying this is you know what? It's not bad. No, it's adorable. As a fashion designer, yeah. I look at that and I see, like, you know, Audrey Hepper. I see the yeah. possibility of looking. <laughs> he can wear things. He can wear things. You can wear a box jacket, darling. You can wear yeah. a box jacket and you can wear a dirndl skirt. Whereas, like, you know, there are very few people in the world who can wear box jackets and that dirndl skirts. That must be oppressive. What? The perfect knowledge of, like, what people can and can't wear based on and their kitten body. Heel. I know, I don't and really a kitten heel. And a kitten heel. You don't need to rely on a big monster platform. Him, darling, get away with a kitten heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I have to tell people I wore a kitten heel. Well, I love a kitten heel. And uh, soon that is going to happen, darling. What is going to happen? Oh, trust, darling, trust me. What is this? Because they're going to get so bored with all that fucking sex clown thing and the big shoes. It's going to go right back to like burning bras. Trust right, me. Right now it's, it's all like happen. big 90s oversized 90s. clothes and stuff. Yeah, everyone's yeah, wearing the, the jeans well, that I'm and this. I'm Same. I know. I just watched your 89 <laughs> collection. It was very, you played with volume in very exciting ways. Did I? Yes, you did. Wow. <laughs> Again, check me out later in 20 minutes and we'll finish with the taping. But 
Um, but yeah, but I, I mean it. You know, fashion, it's like what happens today is just so tired. We get so sick of it in one second. And then where are you? Because you've mastered it. Training a now, dog. Exactly. Training a dog <laughs> while your friends are in Mykonos on private, in a private resort. Right. Very real. Do you have a dog? No. I, no? I'm, You're too busy. I, he travels I'm too running much. Around. I, do, I, would love, I would love some kind of a domesticated life, but right now... Well, By the way, thank air, you I'll for saying you. his name again, because I completely forgot it. Thanks, yeah, Ryan. Ryan. Right, exactly yeah. so. And you are... I'm That's kidding. Fine. Ryan. Ryan. I, 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 I was going to call I'm you I'm telling Ross. no one about this. This is never getting aired. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, no, this is just for us. But yes, I'm single right now. But I'm saying comics in general. Yeah. We're unwell. Very unwell. We're unwell. And then people think, people think they know you. Actually, I remember this um, moment after Unzip came out when I was with my mother, Unzip like fighting with her on the street. And someone came up to us and said, oh, Isaac Mizrahi. Blah, blah, blah. And then they turned, oh, my God, it's Mrs. Mizrahi. I feel like I just saw Unzipped. I feel like I know you. And she said, well, you don't. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you don't. Yes. You yeah, don't. You don't, yeah. <laughs> That's a mom from Brooklyn. Were you, yeah. a t- were you a tough fit to couple up? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And it just so happened that I met Arnold on the street walking my dog. Dogs. And this dogs is, again, are, have a strong... Dogs. And also, this is before smartphones. Mm. So we got... To, we, he walked around. We walked around the block. I got to my door on 12th Street. And, and I go, oh, you know, um, I, I don't have a pen. Why don't you come upstairs and... I'll get your number, right? Yes. It's like, yes, because that was such a good line. I don't have a pen. You want to come upstairs for a second, and I'll get your phone number, you know? Because now it's so boring. You just have to touch phones, and somehow all of your information is there. <laughs> your nudes, your... Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Your, your, <gasps> yeah. What? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. So, you know, I just recently put my dog down about four months oh, ago. So, right? I know. It was so The training oh wasn't God. going well. I know. You are. It's up. You are. For God's sake. This is why it's hard to couple Sorry. with Wait comics. a minute. So, I and I didn't, want to, I didn't want to do the obit right away because I thought, you know what? It's my moment. So, finally, I did it this week. And, and, I sh- and, I, and then, you know, when we posted the story on my feed, I posted some pictures on my story, right, of the dog, like some exclusive pictures of the dog. And they all had like, you know when old people like post things with their scroll on the bottom of it? Mm. Well, it was all dick pics. Like the entire thing. And yes. I'm posting like, I miss you every day and a picture of the dog and then dick pics. <laughs> yeah. It was something so unbelievable. And like the person who works with me, on this, she called me and she was like, Isaac, you have to take this down. How long it's like, were they Dean, up? They were up for about two hours. That is major. That Chris is Evans major, that. right? Yeah, Chris Evans honestly work as a serve. I know. <laughs> I'm for it. Somehow that picture of Dean got mixed in with like my dick pics fo- file. Not That's somehow. We know how. We all know how. We're all on the phone. Ah, stop it. We know I how. Know. No, I don't care. I'm so for dick pics. I think dick pics are replacing dicks, for Christ's sake. They, they, they are yeah. bigger than dicks. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just zoom up, though. I love a dick pic. I mean it. Do you take them, Ryan? God, Do straight no. people take dick pics? No, I don't. All right. I, 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 great people do. I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I mean, I'm a little more. Uh, uh, I just don't like the idea of that being out there. I call mine a dick portrait, actually. Yes. But anyway, sorry. Right, because uh, the gilded frame. <laughs> that's what makes no, it. No, no, because it's it's Norman <laughs> Parkinson from 1958. Okay, thank you, but sorry, but it's Richard Avedon. He did my dick pic. Sorry, where were we? Imagine, of course. Have you ever? Have well, you? no. Once I was walking on Fifth Avenue and I saw Carmen Delorifice. Do you know who she is? That fantastic model. She's still with us. Us. Wow. The big white hair. Oh, sure, She's sure, sure. great model from the Avedon. And she was waiting for the bus. And she showed me her bus pass, and it was literally a Norman Parkinson picture on her bus pass. <laughs> 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 so that is just so glamorous. Like, imagine having this amazing portrait on your fucking bus pass. It's so great, but sorry. So that would be my I dick mean, pic. It would be like Stephen Mizell would do my dick portrait. <laughs> I mean, Mateo's a hell of a drawer. I'm trying. No, I'm trying to figure That's out. That's amazing. You would know because is there like is there a photographer you admire? Isaac, I love. There's a there's a bunch of uh, young, young photographers I love. Sung Daniel either. Sung Lee is great, and and Sam Waxman. They've done photos. I've always a worked with comics. them doing photos and stuff. But um, no, did not, you do, not did the one comics. of them do your Mario? They photo? did. Which Mario? When you did photo? Mario and Luigi with them? No, that was <gasps> Phil Provence. Oh, Have you seen it? <laughs> no, but but. Um, uh, I love Daniel Sung Lee and Sam Waxman. They're like Brooklyn young artists, super talented, and they always do something interesting or creative. So every time I like, they're like, we take photos of you or I need photos, I just let them do whatever they want. And it's so fun. See, here's the thing. You photograph well from basically every, I mean, not basically every angle, every angle, right? People like 
the rest of us have to, like, to get a full contact sheet's worth to find two or three photos that are acceptable. <laughs> have we not covered this? Do you, how do you, when you take a dick pic, are you just satisfied? Um, you know what? Well, if we're talking about dick pics, I don't really do those. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Right, 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 right. Um, and yeah, I, mean, I have to go through Shit. a million pictures before I like something. <laughs> and the thing is, like, when they do, when they do, when they take footage for, like, you know, social on stage, it's always from this low angle. The and just worst. Everybody looks like a monster from that angle. I love you for bringing. And this there's up. no way to combat that. Also, like, you know, for instance, I'm just trying to think of like, you know, TV shows where it's like you're not. Could you move the light? You know, it's like if yeah. you just move the light a little bit. You know, that's something I do in comedy clubs. Is I will actually, I, I, I will like always do a sound and light check to sort of work with the Tweak. lighting because they'll be so bright. Like I did the Miami improv and they were great, but they had these bright lights in front of you and then these bright lights right above you. Uh-huh. So just like elevator lighting. And I if said, if I have that above me, you will see my entire scalp. If right. there is a hot light above my head, you will see. So I said, could you do me a favor and just turn the lights off behind me? And they were super accommodating. Like, sure. And then of course you see photos. I'm like, I look a million times better. It's just like certain lighting. And then one time I was in Boston. Is the Boston? Boston. Boston. You <laughs> they, know they don't know about. I walk out Boston. and there's, <laughs> there's 500 people in the audience and all the lights are on. And I go on stage and I go, oh, I was like, um, I go, I look at the lighting guy in the booth. I go, sorry, it's hold on, everyone. I was like, do do we need the lights on, like for security or for safety for the staff, <laughs> <laughs> or why is it on? He goes, oh, I just want them on. I'm like, do you think we could turn them off? <laughs> Took him solid six minutes to figure out how wow. to turn. Yeah. My lights went off. Their lights got. It looked like a. Remember in Sleeping Beauty. Beauty when they're like shooting the, the the magic wands at the dresses and you can see the lights coming out of the chimney. Yeah, that's what it looked. If anyone walking by, like, what's going on in there? Like, there would be no idea there's a comedy show happening. Finally, it was like, okay, good. The lights are. I, mean, I don't want to see 500 faces. No, no this? audience participation is going to be taking place in this show. Right? No, none. There was a woman last night in the audience who kept saying stuff. And oh, I was like, no. you know what? I love you. Thank you for coming. Shut the fuck up. You know, they don't. Under, they, but, yeah, they no, don't no, no. She was just so Jewish, and she oh. loved me, and I'm Jewish, oh, and she was no. feeling it. You know, yeah. But, I was but, talking about kitten heels or something. She was relating to it. But audience members don't get like I was doing a show. I was in Montreal last week doing a show, and this guy was in the front row, and he was talking, and he wasn't heckling. He wasn't trying to ruin the show, right? But they're talking about the show. But we, I'm so used to my specific rhythm, and I'm doing yeah. this it's like oh, music. I do this course. rhythm, and then they respond. And then I wait, and then I know when to jump back in with my rhythm. And then when you're talking, it breaks. It's called it telling up. jokes, darling. Right, <laughs> but it, it it breaks it up, and then all of a sudden it's like I I then I'm not concentrating, and then they've disconnected with me because I've disconnected. And then I, no matter how you say it's them, you're like I'm you so can't sorry. Say it. You can't. Can you please be quiet? Then they're scolded. I know. Oh yeah. And then the scolded. rest of the audience hates you. Hates right? you they for do. scolding. Yes. Dan Soder said to me once, I was like, "What is that?" And he goes, "Literally, it's like you're sitting at a kitchen." Table talking, and your dad just slaps your mother and says, "Keep going." It's that energy, right? It's and really I was like, true. It's true. There's no way to do it. By the way, it's one thing when it's a cute b- boy or something in the audience who's doing no, he that. He was really? cute, and well, I was still mad. Well, this is the thing. It's another thing when, like, there's like you know this 68 year old like Jewish lady who's so excited and you know pay and eating dinner while she. Have, you do you know, know Jessica right, Kirsten, right. the comedian yes. Jessica Kirsten? Oh, yes, I yeah. do. She, no one funnier. She loves to uh, lampoon it, precisely that character oh, in her comedy she? shows. Absolutely. <laughs> you know um, um, the great Rachel Feinstein. Oh, oh my oh, God. God, love Rachel. Amazing. Is. Obsessed with Rachel. She's, uh, she's going to be on next week. She is. She Rachel's going to be on next week. week. Oh God, you're so lucky. I'm not. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's the thing. What about that shit she does with that partner where they call people? Did you ever see that's, that's Jessica. Jessica. Yeah, that's, that's Jessica. Oh, that's Jessica. Right, exactly. Okay. That is maybe the funniest shit in the <laughs> fucking world. Sorry. No. Jessica Kirsten can you do that. It. Like, that I, little kid boy. <laughs> like really and, and it doesn't like sound like anyone's doing it, which is dangerous for Jessica. Okay. Yes. I'm just saying that means something, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I love Rachel and Jessica. They're so funny together. Absolutely. Rach is great. Jessica, uh, just so, so supportive and very encouraging of uh, new comedians. Like, really. And by the way, yeah. What about Rachel? She's such a babe. Oh, she's Hard. stunning. And, and she, so, she's and, married and, to a captain oh, of the fire the, department. The, the fireman yeah. is also He's extremely hot. 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 Hot in every way, I think. 
if we know what we're all referring to, right? Mm. I'm just saying. Yeah. And she oh, is she's a mentioned. Babe. Yeah. I know she kind of <laughs> talks about it, so we're not saying anything. That, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but healthy. There's another example of a person who doesn't realize that she's like a complete babe, you know? Just saying. She mu- I mean, she must know to some extent, but it's just no. like not where no. she hangs no, her no, hat. No, 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 no. Darling, she, she, e- she texts me and she goes, what about this dress? Will I look okay? And I'm like, darling, you will look the body like is a fucking... Slim. The body, the body and the hair and mm. the face and mm. everything. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, sorry. I just thought You've I would... dressed people forever. And people, and I love that Rachel yeah. writes. She's, I didn't know that Rachel texts Isaac Mizrahi to find out if I she's didn't know either. Sometimes it's always like a black dress, too, or like a beige dress. And I'm like, yeah, beige, maybe not. Go back to black. But yeah. Beige is hard, but sorry. <laughs> Go on. I mean, the king of color, the original king of color. Yeah. It always goes back to, 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 to black for me. So. Same. Yeah. Is that weird? Is that like dressing no, people in darling, like a million colors not. and then just landing? Because no. all I wear is black. That's no. it. Because you were raised by my mother, honey. It's always a black dress and pearls and some pumps. And this is it. Or a black suit and a flower on your lip. This is it. This is the only thing you can wear. One of three things. And I try. I have so many things. I try. <gasps> Turquoise. Blah, and I can't walk out the door. I look like a clown. I feel I, I the same I can't stand way. myself, you know? <laughs> and then someone else, like if I were dressing anybody else, uh-huh. like Ross, I would dress you. And I'm kidding. I just, I just, I just, <laughs> like if I were dressing, this Ryan, is going to make a great passage in my suicide note. Sweetheart, I couldn't resist that. That was who do you like? Mean. Who do you like? Is the, I don't care. <laughs> That's one of the nicest things anyone said to me. Don't worry. Uh, for you, what's a good ma- who's a good male designer? Or what would you say? What should I buy? Yeah. What Isaac? should uh, what should Ryan buy to I attract like, women? You mean for men? <laughs> Chloroform. <laughs> to wear? Yeah, I like I like. I don't know bake. enough about I it I did anymore. like Ted really Baker, don't. but I feel like they, they might have fallen off a little not bit. Not me. Mm-hmm. Not for me. No. No, no. I don't know. I don't know, darling. Don't buy anything. Don't Just, buy anything. Don't buy anything. What did Dionne Vreeland say? Elegance is refusal. Elegance is refusal. I think that's the best thing in the world. Just refuse everything, and you'll be so elegant. I mean it. Okay. Refuse everything. Yep. And he's been. That's, that's a hard one. As, as far as my advances go, he has he has actually been following that to the letter. He has refused. <laughs> Very elegant. <elegant. laughs> refuse, refuse. Um, when people want to change your eyebrows, keep your eyebrows. Your eyebrows oh, are good lord. Perfect. Another You're one. Such good I eyebrows. It's like he honed right in on I everything I've tried to, to change them. about. I know. I, I got two tell. sisters. I can tell. Don't do it anymore. You shouldn't do it. Go <gasps> oh, on. I stopped Sorry. doing it. Oh, you did years right. ago because okay. because I went one Except time. Except there's, there's such edges here, so I know you've done it in the past. What? How many years? When was the last time? I you don't said? remember. I haven't done it in a while. This is the don't best. do it anymore. Don't, don't ever do it again. Okay, I sorry. I went once. I used to go to the salon. Stop with the stop. Just don't do it. I got a story, Isaac. Easy. Pull it back, kitten heels. Oh, this is heaven. I, uh, she ripped my eye. She ripped the skin off my eyebrow. She ripped the skin off of my under wow, eyebrow. That is bad. Yeah, bad. Yeah. That was a this rough was one. Your sister? No, no, no. This was at a salon oh, okay. years ago. All oh, right, right. I'm trying to get him to get on the cosmeceuticals. What? You oh, know no. what I'm, oh, I yeah. can't. I don't support any of that stuff. I I'm really full don't. of it. Are you kidding me? I've never I could done pop a zit and kill us all. And I look, <laughs> instead I love of looking like popping zits, and I love watching people pop blackheads on Instagram. I'm upset. <laughs> Not cis, not cysts. No, not zits. cysts. No, a z- like a yeah. good old blackhead. blackhead. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Like a There's nice a Biore tape. We like to see. We love nice. it. Or like very satisfying. You'll just see. Like I'll be going to my 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 explore page is usually like Mariah Carey men's asses and zits, and then like <laughs> I'll be going through, and you'll just see like close up of like a mouth, and you'll see like three blackheads, yes. and I'm like. <laughs> and just like watch them come, oh, feels. Great. I mean, it has all the suspense of like a of a like a big screen thriller. It's Do you know like, what? I, yeah. It's like, when it's I like raging bull. Things, yeah. All I think of when I see that is like, oh my god, I have to get to mine, and I feel so loaded with it. You know what I mean? When I see Biore tapes or people doing blackheads, I think, well, what about all my blackheads? And people are looking at me, going, "Do your fucking blackheads?" But I don't. Blackheads, th- well, actually, so my grandpa's blind. He went blind at the age of five, and he he put himself through law school, became a judge. He's very dignified, and stuff, but he. He's blind and Sicilian, so he's got these huge blackheads here. So finally, my uh-huh. sister, like 10 years ago, she was like, Pops, lay down. He's like, boy, so you got big blackheads. What's a blackhead? Just shut up. So she just put on the viewers and ripped them out. And, oh, oh, my I know heaven. this is a food show, but do you like popping them, too? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a sickness, wanting to pop someone else's zits. It's not a good thing. It's, it's not. not. No, he's, nope. he frowns on it. It's Love not it. a good thing. You can't pop anything. This is why comedians are impossible. Go immediately to a dermatologist. <laughs> preferably uptown and preferably with like a gold in the name. Like Goldman or Goldstein. <laughs> Jewish. Yes. I mean that. I'm just saying. No, I, go, I get facials. 
When different I was facials. a kid, I had bad skin. And at the age of 13, I started seeing this dermatologist on Fifth Avenue and 68th Street. My mother was not fooling around. Yeah. Yeah. And she put, we, they put us on like tetracycline or something like that. It didn't sure, matter. Sure, we just sure. have to have, yeah. I had to Flipper have nice babies. skin. Yeah, I'm not kidding. We yeah. have to have nice skin. But I don't, I, don't, I, don't believe in, I don't believe in that sort of um, the face work and the shots. I don't believe in it. Nobody looks good. I mean, some people look good, but... We know. I mean, we can tell that you've done this, right? I mean, come on. Are you, right? Is this directed? Because there's a ton. No, because I don't know what you used to look like. So what I'm saying. Why? We just show okay, a picture no, of Susan totally Boyle. Fair. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. I would absolutely. I wish I could pass for Susan Boyle. Where uh, is Susan Boyle? Ago. In hiding. I, I think she's in hiding. I think she she had social difficulties and she is comfortable being. You know, she's having a an ale a logger. I think she got married. In what I'm imagining is a wood clad room, right? Left alone. <laughs> Leave her alone. Panel Leave poor Susan alone. alone. I guess you're right. She did do it. She came out. So she, she, she did it. No, she did she, what? She came out, became a singer like Eileen Page. Like yeah. she said, she wanted to. She's an okay singer. It was that there was a makeover. Yeah. Yeah, she was she sang okay for the Pope. Singer. Yeah, just because you're ugly no, doesn't mean you're a good singer. Sorry, I said. Well, that. that's what it was. I mean, that's what it was. <laughs> I hope that was clean. a joke. I, I fucking hate you. You it's made a, me say that because I was thinking that. And I think I once said that before and I got like really chastised for saying it, but it is a hilarious thing I don't thing think when Susan Boyle true. broke well, out on the scene, anyone was like, and this great beauty. I don't well, think no, no, that happened. That's the way Britain's Got Talent set it up. They yeah. edited oh, yes. it in a way for us to be like, yeah. here's Ew, this no, right, homely exactly. looking woman. Yeah. We woke oh, her up. Homely women can sing. Yeah, we literally shook her out of bed and now we put a microphone in Right, the narrative was fed to us. Yes. We didn't just come up with it. Yeah. You know? yes. Look how no, little course. effort course. she puts into but the way she... You wouldn't expect this sound to come out of this beast. That's how they sold it. Yes, yeah. no, totally. That totally. was the narrative. Totally. I can't believe we're spending this much time talking, talking about, about Susan Boyle. Boyle. How long is this fucking podcast? <laughs> I know it's I'm not I got surprised at all. I was going to say exactly what I thought was going to happen. I hate you all. I hate you all. So here's the thing. Matteo, okay, we're, we're getting to the food now. We just have to get to the okay. food. I'd like this now, all in Italian, cheat day, please. we all love... Okay, you want me to do Italian? <laughs> uh, so... Thanks for listening to the Cheat Day Show podcast. To learn more about our show, the hosts, the comedians, our guests, our chefs, and more, visit our website, thecheatdayshow.com. Also, follow along with us on our social media, at The Cheat Day Show, on Instagram and Twitter. Future episodes can be found in all the places you get your favorite podcast. Our show is also sponsored by the world-famous Comedy Cellar on McDougal Street in New York City's Greenwich Village. Visit ComedyCellar.com for show lineups happening seven days a week. Later, cheaters. Cheaters.